really should garnish these cocktails are going down too easy. I need to keep track with my umbrellas in the hair, Matt, because it's... Oh, hey! Hi! It's me, Wilma Finger Do, and I'm Untucked, so I hope you are too. So let's get to it. Well, this week's Untucked, there were only three safe queens this week. Uh, it was, of course, uh, Jada Essence Hall, uh, Widow Von Du, and Sherry Pie. And I have to say, I was nervous for this Untucked out of the gate because how are they going to edit around Sherry Pie when she's a third of the people in that room? Like, <laughs> and just keep, like, ah, and then she cut out. So uh, already, this was, this was just a little interesting for me out of the game. Of course, all the queens were grateful to be safe, but none more than Widow Von Du, especially after last week where she kind of jumped down uh, our Ms. Cox and uh, Sherry Pie's throats over their berating the rest of the cast for not being more prepared for a snatch game. And again, I'm going to say I agree with Widow. You can be as prepared as you want for an improv challenge, but it doesn't mean you're going to do well in the challenge. It's what it's called improv and not scripted theater <laughs> that's being directed and rehearsed. Seriously. Even Jada took this opportunity with not a lot of girls being around in the Untucked Lounge to agree with Widow Von Du that she is right and that, you know, you can't prepare for everything the way you think you can prepare. And they also, I, I think, lambasted Jackie Cox, even though she wasn't there in the room, uh, for being the queen with that opinion more so than sherry pie but sherry pie certainly got on the bandwagon of saying yeah you should have been more prepared which led her to ask well do you are you mad at me too and and you know what yeah yeah <laughs> good for a widow i love that she holds a grudge oh she's not kidding i love that she holds a grudge i love that she she um i never forgets <laughs> and i and i love that she's not above uh saying i told you so when it's right there for the telling. Seriously, here's to you, Widow. <laughs> but before anyone could really tell Sherry Pie what they thought of her, the other queens returned to the Untucked Lounge. And right away, Jan was crowing. You could see she was thrilled. She had gotten a great review. She was sure she was going to win this. She couldn't see a situation where she wasn't going to be the winner. And God bless her for that. But seriously... I mean, everyone knew it was over after they talked to Gigi. Am I the only one? Seriously? Of course, it wasn't all celebration and song. Uh, Britta got a little teary-eyed over the fact that she was completely sure she was going to the bottom for her third time. And that wasn't boding well for her. Seriously. Heidi Blesser was also feeling a little down because the judges seemed to not be as impressed with her performance as I think she was hoping they would be. And... I get it. I understand how she's feeling that because uh, she is putting a lot into it. But the the hard thing, and 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 this is a point the girls made in the Untucked Lounge, like she got a lot of charisma, she got a lot of personality. Uh, she's got that in spades. Uh, the the judges are often complimenting her on just that. Her back and forth with them on the the runway is the highlights of Heidi's uh, performance so far on RuPaul's Drag Race. But that said. Um, she's not really translating that into the performance. It's almost like she's think, thinking too hard of the performance, so she's, she's just focused on the performance, and then when there's nothing else to do, then she relies on that personality because she got, like, well, oh, now what do I do? Ah, you know, like that kind of thing. So it just, it's heartbreaking to see her struggle because it's when you are struggling that you're either on the, the verge of a, a breakthrough or a breakdown. Here's to you, Heidi. Don't break down, girl. Gigi quietly made it all about herself by saying how badly she felt now for criticizing Heidi and her makeup. Seriously. Heidi, on the other hand, was wrestling with her own demons because she was convinced she was also going down to the bottom two to lip sync for her second time. But, but before Heidi could let her emotions weigh her down, there was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the Untucked Lounge to meet the queens. And it seemed like it was a mutual thrill for all parties involved. Uh, and why shouldn't it be? I think one of the reasons that people don't vote is that they're not engaged to. There's often this age 
discrepancy. There's a lot of old white people in government and a lot of young people who don't care what they're saying and don't vote and don't, they just, uh, and I think it's when we get these younger politicians in and, and uh, disrupting the old boys club and getting the young people engaged in the democratic process, then we start to see real change. Because the problem is, uh, change doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. It doesn't, we didn't just all of a sudden allow gays to got, get married. A lot of gays were killed in the process of getting that to happen. Uh, many beaten, many uh, disassociated. It, it, it just doesn't happen. But isn't it great that we have a society now that benefits from all of that and will never know in some cases what uh, was done on their behalf. So I think it's very important for people like uh, AOC to represent people, real people in government, but also Alexandria herself as a congresswoman. She is killing it because She's only been doing it a short, as she said, last February, she was tending a bar. And from what I understand, uh, social media was big in her uh, move to Congress. And I think that she uh, uh, is really, really a genuine uh, voice for the people. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see a continued great things from her. But uh, as it was right now, it was such a lovely uh, moment for the girls because especially as, as Jackie said on the runway, you know, to have somebody there uh, fighting for these issues in a government right now that is not interested in those issues or those people at all. Seriously. Here's to you, OAC. Keep doing you what you do. And then all of a sudden, it was time for the Queens to return to the runway where we now know that it was true. Britta and Heidi were in the bottom and it was Britta who went home. And uh, I have to say, I was very, very, um, uh, I was surprised that Britta went home. I, I didn't expect her to because one of the things, uh, regardless of how she was conducting herself, oh, is that she still, she still had that drive, that, that killer instinct to win. And if she wasn't doing it in a performance, she was definitely doing it on a runway. And it just seemed like this was the, the, the one week that she hadn't planned a killer finishing move for. And it really, it really was that one, um, lost too many for Britta and of course she went home uh it was it was nice to see that everyone left her notes and you could see that regardless of how she was conducting herself that the queens there uh genuinely liked her and, and I really do hope uh that as uh we move uh forward from this that um the way that Britta is portrayed and I'm not saying that she's being falsely portrayed but I will agree with people that say the editing can sometimes lean something into a more pointed, heavier opinion. And I'm just hoping that this constant editing of Britta's comments about Aiden back to back to back didn't paint her in a way that will affect her audience base in New York or her ability to make money. I certainly hope that nobody picks on her online. I mean, uh, clearly she's out of the running. She's not going to win. So anyone who had issues with her, with Aiden, needs to relax because I think the right next queen went home after Aiden. And that was Britta. So there you go. Whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing, we're now down to eight queens. OMG, I can't believe with all the drama and all the, the stuff we've had to deal with this year that we're already halfway through uh, RuPaul's, more than halfway through. Uh, so who do you think's next to go home? I have to say, it's really hard for me to pick anybody right now, only because there are people like Jackie Cox, who I think is just fabulous. She still has those, those, those dips that, that now... Is not the time to have. Everyone's killing it. Everyone has to be on Gigi's level of execution. Be prepared. Do it to your best, uh, and and just keep your eye on the prize because uh, it just takes one person to stumble, and it could all fall apart. So that's it for this week. I'm going to remain un untucked mostly because I'm not going outside. What's the point? I'm not even wearing pants. Just this top. Just it. Just tops and gloves. It's weird when I order Uber Eats and I answer the door. 
Just saying. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. There's our, our, our uh, untucked for the week. Uh, all we can do is tune into RuPaul's Drag Race next week to see how it all falls apart or builds up or however it comes together. And then we can untuck once again, enjoy a cocktail with each other, and compare notes. Until then, miss me. Mwah. Seriously, Morgan. Yeah, we need to get some garnishing going. This has been some.